So uh, the program chairs gave me a bit of a hard act to follow after this morning's keynotes. Um, but today, um, my name is Michael. I'm here from LinkedIn. And um, we're going to talk about um, reducing mean time to resolution, known as MTTR, and false escalations, um, and how we do event correlation at LinkedIn. Event correlation, uh, as Charity mentioned earlier, is difficult. Um, especially the smaller you are, um, getting the resources you need to do this becomes harder. Um, LinkedIn is large, um, but it, uh, what we've been able to build um, has actually required pretty little resources in all actuality, um, which is awesome. Uh, so what I'm hoping for you guys to get out of this is uh, how you can take some of what we've done and um, build your own system. All right, so false escalations. Uh, I want everyone to put their hands up uh, if you've been woken because your service un is unhealthy because it depends on someone else and their service is broken. All right, like half the room. Uh, keep your hands up if you've been woken because someone believes that your service is broken, um, but it's not. All right, more hands go up. Um, and who has spent hours uh, trying to work out why your service is broken only to find that it was a dependency that you couldn't really see? All right, for those people who didn't put their hand up, I want your job. Um, <laughs> talk to me after. All right, so basically all of you in the room have experienced this. Um, and so we too... All right, we will go ahead and get this panel started in a minute or so. Uh, <laughs> we good? All right. Um, <laughs> anyway, all right. So, um, so we've all experienced this at all. Uh, is less than optimal, right? Um, and you know, at LinkedIn, we have some of the same problems. So uh, we tried to build this event correlation system uh, to stop having these false escalations, but also to fix um, mean time to resolution. All right, so today um, I want to talk about the journey that we took in building our uh, event correlation system. Uh, so I want to uh, start by sort of talking about our problem statement and what the goals of our project were, and then guide uh, everyone through um, architectural approaches, because um, as you'll find out, uh, there is, depending on your infrastructure, it's not a one-size-fits-all uh, one um, sort of deal. Um, so talk about what the approaches are that you can take and how we built our uh, correlation system around uh, LinkedIn's particular challenges. Um, and then we'll go and look at um, some takeaways, um, some results, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions, so we'll leave some time uh, for those. All right, so who am I? Uh, I'm Michael Keogh. I'm a staff site reliability engineer at LinkedIn. I'm on a team called Production SRE, and uh, Production SRE has four main goals, uh, which I don't actually have up there, but um, uh, most likely, well, they're on this slide, um, the uh, four key tenets are basically reducing, reducing mean time to detect and mean time to remediate through building applications, provide direction on site monitoring, build tools for efficient site issue troubleshooting, issue detection, and correlation. Um, and assist in restoring stability uh, during site critical issues. So yesterday I sort of talk, uh, talked about, uh, in a different talk, about uh, how my team uh, restores stability. Um, and today we're going to talk about, uh, you know, fixing mean time to uh, resolution and troubleshooting and correlation. All right. So I want to visualize uh, our problem statement from the perspective of an SRE. So firstly, as our services get more complex, uh, our reliability can go down. As our services get more complex, the learning engineer, uh, learning uh, curve for engineers is, goes higher, especially in the microservices world. And then finally, as our services get more complex, the mean time to resolution can go up. And as you all know, uh, higher mean time re to resolution is bad for both our customers uh, and also ourselves as engineers. 
Um, so this project uh, was about fixing false escalations, but also um, making a better experience for ourselves as engineers so we can sleep more, for our customers so they can use our site better. Um, and what that comes down to is basically reducing mean time to resolution. So my boss gave me uh, this problem statement and said, we want you to provide a unified API that can find the problem with a service in either real time or post hoc analysis after the, the event. And we want to be able to plug that into our automation systems. Then he said, we also want a web front end uh, that allows engineers to sort of visualize the problem uh, so they can do some introspection. And so we said, all right, let's do it. Um, and you know, f to sort of scope the project a little bit more, um, basically the success criteria was um, to reduce MTTR on applicable incidents and also to reduce um, false and needless escalations. Uh, at LinkedIn, we're lucky to, uh, for some SRE teams to have uh, 12 by 7 coverage. So they've got a counterpart in the other half of the world to help them out while they sleep but that doesn't apply to all teams. So we are trying to ensure that uh, our SREs uh, and our engineers as well can sleep as much as possible. And you know, we don't escalate um, to you know, a team who owns a front end, whose service is hosed because there's some back end that's broken. It's not useful to anyone. So given this problem statement and ASIC's success criteria, um, we did have to sort of scope um, you know, what is in scope for this correlation system being able to detect uh, and correlate? Um, and so we said um, basically anything within the data center uh, was in scope. So, for example, internal metrics show that a front end or a middle tier has high latency or high error rates. Um, we want to be able to work out what's causing that. Uh, we did say that you know if external monitoring sees something um, like slow, so we have third-party monitoring uh, outside of our network. Uh, if they say we're slow, well, that's kind of out of scope because there's so many variables. There's the internet, there's DNS, the CDN, etc. Really difficult for us to correlate against. Um, and to be honest, we tr we trust those um, systems, um, and we trust that we have the right monitoring in those events. So when it comes uh, to the approach of building a system, uh, an event correlation system, um, there's a few different approaches you can say, uh, you can take. Uh, Real-time metric analytics, uh, which is like basically streaming data um, at real time via something like Apache Spark or Apache Samza and uh, doing regression analysis or whatever. Um, as Charity said before, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard. Um, you need a lot of resources to generally do this. Um, and we'll get to uh, in a little bit, you know, why that wasn't applicable for us. Um, and then ad hoc metric analysis. Um, so, you know, you go and say you have offline data or uh, you have data in some sort of analytics database. And after the event, you say, all right, here are the metrics. Try and work out what's, what's happening. Um, and then alert correlation, um, which takes alerts from a monitoring system um, of things that we know are unhealthy and then sort of fits the, um, puts the puzzle together of, you know, what is service A breaking service B, et cetera. So let's evaluate the, uh, evaluate the pros and cons of each option. So uh, real-time analytics um, through metrics, uh, uh, sorry, real-time metric analytics through uh, stream processing, it's usually termed anomaly detection. Um, so the good thing is it's fast. Um, you can do, you know, advanced insights in, you know, almost real time. Um, the con is it's generally expensive. You need a lot of hardware um, to process that, um, depending on your setup. Um, at LinkedIn, we have a lot of metrics, a lot. Um, so to try and, you know, put this all into Kafka do analysis on all of this, like we're talking millions of metrics, it, just, it doesn't scale. Um, in some cases, there are you know places out there that that's fine, that's uh, not for us. Um, ad, hoc, ad hoc metric analysis, um, smaller re uh, resource footprint. You know, you generally don't have an SLA 
or a tight SLA, so you don't need as much hardware. Um, the problem is it is it is slow, um, which in real time is if you're trying to troubleshoot or work out what's breaking your system, uh, that's not really ideal. And then you have uh, alert correlation. Um, so for us, um, it's it's actually really good because you know we can leverage alerts that already exist for all of our systems in our, uh, in our in our architecture, and you've got a strong signal to noise ratio. Like there's an alert saying yes, there is something broken here. Um, the sort of problem with that is um, you know alerts are generally sort of uh, confined to a boolean state. They're either firing, they're e something's either broken or it's not, um, and that's sometimes not as useful as you'd like it to be. All right, so just summarizing this. So real-time analytics is expensive, but useful. Ad hoc metrics analytics is slower, but it's cheaper to implement. Uh, and alert correlation gives us a good signal. All right, so where do we go from here? So at LinkedIn, um, we actually had two smaller projects that we could sort of leverage um, in building this event correlation system. These were uh, more or less side projects, um, but had shown a lot of promise. So firstly was um, what we call Drill Down and Site Stabilizer, um, which is a near time, uh, does near time metric analytics, which I'll talk about in a second. And it also does event correlation. So it looks at you know what deployments happened at this, in the same time period, what A-B experiments were changed, et cetera. And then we have um, Invisualize, uh, which does alert correlation. Um, so we, for us, um, we already sort of had two systems um, that were sort of already out there that we could leverage. Excuse me for a second. So doing this, um, having these engines is great. Um, but the problem is for us, we're very highly microservices uh, dependent architecture. Uh, the ability to correlate is great, um, but you need to understand your dependencies. Um, so we need to build a call graph. Um, and you know the LinkedIn stack doesn't look too dissimilar uh, to that picture. So, um, in building a call graph API, thankfully at LinkedIn, uh, our metrics are very standard. Um, so for each dependency that my service has, I've got the same set of metrics in every application. So we can use this um, to map um, our dependencies fairly simply, actually. Um, I was actually surprised by the simplicity of this. Um, so what we actually have is uh, a daemon call graph backend, and it goes and uh, scrapes the metric list. Um, we've got a metrics index. We get the metrics for each service, um, and so we, uh, we basically look at three key dependencies. So RESTly, uh, which is our internal API platform, so similar to console or uh, etcd, um, Voldemort, which is our read-only store, um, and then Espresso, our read-write key-value store. Uh, so we go there out for, for a service. These are our main three dependencies um, in terms of like protocols. So we go and scrape the metric index, and we go and build a map of um, what the dependencies look like. And while we're doing this, uh, we go and also collect uh, the call count and the latency and the errors where applicable um, of you know what service A sees with service B and we average this over time and um, we store that data because uh, as you'll see in a second it's actually super useful to us so now we have this service called drill down uh, which does near time analytics so using the call graph uh, we actually go and uh, we go and find what we consider to be high value dependencies so service A calls service B 10,000 times a second. Uh, that's high value to us. Service A calls service B two times a second. In all likelihood, less valuable. There are edge cases, but it fits um, for our use case. 
So we go and work out what our high, de high value dependencies are and we go and get the associated metrics. And what we go and do is in five minute chunks, uh, we go and grab these metrics and then we do k-means um, uh, analytics on them uh, to go and find similar trends between uh, service metrics. Um, and we have a queryable API where we can go and say, well, uh, you know, between this time and now, I'm seeing something funky on this service. Try and see if you find something that's similar uh, on one of my dependent services. And it will give me uh, that back. And you, what we get back, and I cropped the wrong part of the image, uh, you get back a list of services and the fabric and the confidence score um, that we have uh, that that particular service is the problem. Then we have Invisualize, which is our alert correlation system. So it polls um, our alerting database um, constantly um, to go and see all the uh, active alerts on a given service. So this service knows that this alert, uh, sorry, uh, Invisualize knows that this given alert belongs to this service. So we can say, well, oh, this service is alerting. Something must be broken with it. And then we use the call graph API to sort of piece together um, which service is broken and then what upstreams are affected. And again, we have uh, normalized results um, via an API. But we also get this really cool visualization. Um, so uh, to walk you through it, so down the bottom, we've got a really broken backend. Um, and you can see a number of services go through the service on the left identity. Um, and that, that, uh, that application looks sort of unhealthy and its downstream looks really unhealthy. And then you can see at the top all the different front ends affected basically by this. Um, so it is actually super useful for us to be able to visualize the problem. Um, for our site ops, or formerly known as NOC team, um, this is super useful to sort of piece together what's going on in the lar uh, larger picture. Um, they might not necessarily understand all the dependencies. Um, other SREs might not, not, uh, might not understand all the dependencies between their services. So this gives a really good overview of where the site is at at a given point of time. And um, this is actually really cool. Um, we can actually uh, basically uh, run a, create a video of um, what happened in an incident. So we can, uh, using the alerts, we can say, well, we started to see one service alerting, and then we started to see more, and how they interconnect. And I didn't want to risk trying to run a video during a presentation. But it's super useful to sort of visualize the um, what happened during uh, an event. Uh, and it's actually super useful for postmortems as well. Um, we can really go back and understand in a more calm, man, uh, more calm situation, what happened, what led up to this, um, you know, when did we resolve the issue, etc. So then we have this service called Site Stabilizer, and what Site Stabilizer does is it basically takes the recommendations from Visualize and Drill Down and ranks them and, tr and basically tells us, all right, what is what do we really think is broken? And then we, uh, with that, um, we also attach or decorate um, information um, about, you know, why we think it's broken. So if there was a scheduled change registered in our change database during that time, we'll say, well, this might be related. Um, or deployment events, so if someone deployed the service that appears to be broken now. Um, or if someone uh, made an A-B experiment change uh, during the same sort of time period. Um, so we get that metadata, um, which is super useful. As Tanya said earlier this morning, like no one is at their best at 3 a.m. Um, and you know, when I get called at 3 a.m., any sort of information that a system can give me about what might be broken uh, is better than nothing. Um, so as an on-call SRE, I really appreciate that. So what does our architecture look like? Uh, so on the right, we've got uh, our call graph system with an API. Then we've got drill down and visualize, which are basically our data mining services. And then we've got site stabilizer, basically collating that data and decorating it for us. So the last piece is sort of accessing that data. So we have um, correlate front end. 
And Correlate Frontend, its main purpose is to provide an API for our uh, auto remediation system, which we'll talk about in a second, um, but also for our alert system. So uh, if I'm 95% sure that you know my service isn't broken, um, just suppress the alert. I don't want to know about it. Um, that does sound dangerous. Um, so you know it does have to be used with a bit of caution. Um, but you know I've definitely had times uh, when I was working on other services where I wish I had this because 99.99% of the time it was one of my two downstreams that was causing problems. So along with this API, we also um, provide a UI uh, for manual introspection. So for our um, site ops team, um, they who watch the site, they can sort of plug in the variables into this form and get recommendations, um, which look like this. So I've sort of mocked it up a little bit. But we basically say, hey, service uh, C is responsible. We're 92% sure. And it looks like a deployment started at this, the same time, which correlates with this high latency we're seeing. Um, SRE team owns the particular service. And here's the analysis from um, in Visualize and um, I'll drill down, basically. Um, so we give a lot of that metadata um, for our engineers to use. Um, and when it comes to mean time resolu to resolution, um, you know, having a head start is super important. Um, for one thing I've noticed over a period of time is trying to load, you know, hundreds of graphs and dashboards on a slow VPN connection when I'm not at my desk is not fun, uh, especially when stuff's on fire. So if I can sort of like um, use one form to give me a head start on where I think the problem is, that is super super useful for me to me as an engineer, um, and also to our customers who you know want our product fixed. So when you put it all together, um, now we have the same call graph on the right. And then we have um, our automation coming in to correlate front end, and we also have users who will go and use our service uh, to go and work out what's happening. So I want to walk you guys, uh, I want to walk everyone through uh, what this actually sort of looks like in the way that we're using it. So um, I'll quickly explain everything. So at the top, I have a latency alert. Um, on the left side, I've got my alert correlation API. On the right, I've got Iris, which is LinkedIn's internal version of PagerDuty, our paging system. And then we have Nurse, uh, which is our auto remediation system. And Nurse allows us to do uh, complex workflows. Um, and uh, you know, if, uh, if something is down, we can restart it. We can go and call people. We can go and uh, run uh, debugging tools. We can go and log tickets. It's really flexible and really awesome. So what does what does our use case look like? So I have my latency alert for uh, my front end. I want to be 85% sure that it's not my service before I go and call someone. And then I, I do want to call someone, so escalate to another team if we're sure. So Nurse goes and, uh, and gets this alert, and uh, it goes and calls Correlation API. And it says, what is wrong with the my front end service in data center B? So our alert Correlation API via Correlate front end will go and uh, analyze what it sees in the current state of the world. Um, and then say, well, hey, we think service C is broken, and we're 91% sure that that is um, what's causing it. Um, and service C has high latency after a deploy. And the SRE owner is SRE. I didn't want to shame any SRE teams at LinkedIn. So we're, we're sure that it, it's not my service. Um, and, and we're pretty sure that you know, service C is the problem, and it's owned by you know, another SRE team. So nurse goes and pages that team. So uh, what this does is it enables, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it enables me, who owns my front end service, to go and sleep, uh, you know, while someone else's service is on fire. And instead of uh, me getting woken up, the team that's responsible, if they're not already awake, they will be soon. Um, and so we can give uh, our customers a, a better mean time to resolution because we're already pretty sure we know where the problem is. Um, we let I get to sleep in. Um, but we also give that SRE who's sort of fighting the fire now a head start on what the, what the issue might be. We give them as much, much metadata as possible. 
So early results. Uh, so firstly, um, our site ops, or known as our NOC team, has greater visibility on the site. If they see something strange, someone reports something strange, they can go and have a look. Um, and they have a better understanding of how the site is behaving. Secondly, we're uh, reducing mean time to resolution. So as soon as we see something uh, start to go south, we can run this analysis straight away. We don't need specialists to go and, um, you know, we don't need subject matter experts to go and sort of get paged, come online, spend five minutes trying to load graphs. Uh, you know, we already start on where the problem is. Um, so we can reduce mean time to resolution um, by, uh, you know, getting to this, uh, getting the right teams, right people involved very quickly. Um, and a side effect of that is we reduce false escalations. So there's people who are uh, sort of held prisoner um, by dependencies. Um, they get to sleep or they get to continue working uh, uninterrupted, which you know allows us to work on other things or, or sleep, um, which both are great to have. All right, so in conclusion, um, so as Charity said again, um, you know, event correlation is really difficult. Um, the real-time metrics analytic stuff is super difficult unless you're, you know, a much larger company with much more resources. So, sort of identifying the approach that makes sense to your infrastructure is important. Um, you know, near-time analytics might make uh, might be useful. Um, alert correlation might be useful. It's about finding, you know, what's in your budget how your infrastructure is built, what works for you. Understanding your dependencies. Um, so like in the microservices architecture at LinkedIn, like our velocity is so high. Like some, some of our applications get pushed three times a day. Um, so understanding your dependencies and not assuming um, that your dependencies change. My colleague Ben spoke about that yesterday afternoon. Try not to make assumptions. Um, you know, understanding your dependencies is important, and you know, even the best SRE, um, you have the likelihood that they can remember every single dependency your service has. Um, good luck. Um, so we have a machine to do it for us, and like that call graph backend system, it literally updates like every hour because things change that rapidly. Things might be added, things might be removed, SLAs might change. Um, so understanding your dependencies is super important to being able to sort of understand uh, the causality between you know service A looking broken and service B or service C being on fire. Um, and then finally, uh, build, integrate, and benefit. So it is it is great to have you know these correlation APIs in this front end, um, but the real win we get is uh, tying it back into our autom automation. Um, for us as SREs at LinkedIn, you know we try and have our ops work be less than 50%. Um, so anytime, you know, I don't need to get paged or someone bother me saying, hey, I think your service is broken, that's a win for me. Um, so tying things into um, the into your automation, into your learning system, um, you'll see wins. Um, and to be honest, you know, that is just as important as building the, the system itself. And then, you know, hopefully once you build integrate, um, you know, everyone will benefit. People sleep, people get more work done, um, mean time to resolution is, is lower. So before I finish, um, I just want to give a shout out uh, to a number of people who made this project a success. Um, don't know if any of them are in the room today. I can't see them. Um, so uh, Rusty uh, Reynold, who should be at the conference today, uh, Kishore and Ranjith, who should also be here today. Um, you know, All those engineers put in a lot of hours to build this system. and uh, I'm really sort of their spokesperson for today. Uh, so, you know, they've done an incredible amount of work to actually build something uh, that is reliable and that, uh, you know, that our whole organization uh, can benefit from. So thank you very much. Uh, any questions can be taken at the microphone in the middle. Thank you. Hi. Um, two questions. Yeah. So... How do you deal with Fanon? So you break your naming service, and every service in that cluster is going to blame the naming service, right? So they do they get 50 pages, or what's the? Um, so our uh, escalation system actually has a concept of like batching alerts. Right. Um, so we sort of escape that. Um, but does yeah. that still hold true? If because because you have like five different services, presumably they're going to be firing different alerts. Um, so the way they... the way we've set it up, 
we get around that problem. Okay, cool. We can discuss yeah, yeah. it offline. Yeah. Um, and but yeah. Yeah. And the second question is, how does this tie in with what if the dependent system that you've identified as broken is still operating within their SLA? Like, arguably, they then shouldn't be paid. Yeah, right? so that's a good question. Um, so, so basically, you get use cases where service A, your front end, starts to do expensive queries, and it says, oh, service B looks slow. But you know, none of the other services that call service B say it's slow. It's just you. Um, so the way that ends up working out is basically we give the results a lower confidence score saying, well, we're not really sure it's this, like, um, and that sort of infers that it's probably you, not, not them. Um, you know, for things that are broken, we see, you know, higher correlation scores in the 80s, 90s. Um, yep. Sorry, I think I'm asking yep. a different yep. question. So serv service B is actually slower, but yep. they're still within their published SLA. Yeah, uh, yeah so the TLDR is you'll get a lower, um, you'll get a lower confidence score. Um, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Welcome. Hey, so question about the call graph backend. Yeah. You said it updates uh, regular, regularly yep. to yep. frequently. How do you do the discovery to do that updating? Um, so we... The, all right, so we actually so we run uh, Zookeeper um, to do service discovery uh, using our own platform, Restly. Um, so we sort of know which endpoints are served by which services, and then we can use the metrics from each service to work out um, the mappings between. All right, this service calls another service. Okay. Um, it's, it's yeah, it's the best way we can do it, um, and so we were able to sort of compute our whole call graph within about. Two minutes on a single node. So it's like a two minute. Does it update every two minutes or so? Um, the velocity it? isn't that high, so yeah. it's uh, I think once every hour. Okay. Um, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Welcome. Hey, uh, does the front end service ever find out that they did get paged, even though you slept through it because you didn't get paged? Um, Is there any post review, say the next day? Um, no, um, what we're trying to do is for any, um, this is not pretty, but for any uh, workflow in our auto remediation system uh, that my team get a tracking ticket so we can go and review the results, um, but no, generally um, speaking. Because I'm, I have a, maybe it's not really a question, I should probably stop talking, <laughs> but as a follow-up to that one, um, does... Perhaps the alert arriving at the front end is a signal that even if the back end has gotten slow, maybe you can build some extra resilience in the front end and that you wouldn't be aware of that now that you're not sending the alerts to yourselves anymore. Um, so that's a good question. Um, it's not a question, so I'm going to so, sit down. Yeah, it's actually something we're working on on the side in another project, but fair point. <laughs> uh, so, so my question is related to the correlation. So yep. when you have an incident, you will correlate the changes or deployment. Um, I so think you based on the start time or end time. Um, it's based. Uh, it's more based on the start time. Um, so we give or take a few minutes um, uh -huh. due to you know deployments. The actual service restarting might not line up with the deployment system starting. So we give and take a few minutes. Um, a lot of most of our correlation is done in real time, so there's not necessarily in end time. It's end time is like now because it's still ongoing. Um, so my question is, there might be like multiple changes in yep. following that. Yes. So, so do you consider other features? How do you do you further triage? Uh, yes. So we uh, we actually rank what we think like we rank what we think happened at that particular time at the start time, um, you know, what we think caused that. So we know that, you know, a deployment of C service, um, you know, that broke something and we know that A and B services depend on that service. So we can rank uh, that, um, we can, yeah, basically rank the events that happened at the time to give, you know, to give a, the best result we think. Okay, so so basically you are ranking them still based on time, but there are still some uh, yeah, other features. Yeah, like it, it's <laughs> difficult to say. Well, um, 
this deployment r really broke something, yeah. um, you know, really bad. Um, it, it gets really tricky pretty quickly, and that's where you need the extra computing resources to go and then work that stuff out. All right, thank you. Hi. Hey. Can you elaborate a little bit more on Nurse? Is it a yeah. third-party tool developed in-house, and if so, how much resources? Yeah, so um, Nurse is a, a tool that we've built in-house. In um, you'll find, uh, if you want to talk to me later, we've got a lot of blogs um, and a, a meetup, I think, next week as well. Um, so yeah, Nurse is a workflow engine where we can give it inputs, um, and then we can define a workflow. Um, and we can basically take arbitrarily, you know, number of actions and apply rules. Um, and we're, we've got it to a point where it's super flexible now. So um, come and talk to me after I can tell you a little bit more about it um, and point you to some resources that might be useful. Great. Thanks. Welcome. Hello. Hey. Um, so MTTR is great. Yep. The one thing that I'm curious about is how does MTTD come into play with all of this? Um, because you're, you've said real time a couple times, and I know not everything is real time when you're detecting. Yeah, so um, funnily enough, um, this project doesn't aim to sort of improve MTTD. Like you okay. still need someone to notice something's broken for, right. for this to fire. In saying that, um, but the two have to be connected, right? Because you're not having resolution unless you detect. Um, so is, is, is there another system that ties so I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So the way that we measure those, okay. uh, there's not necessarily a correlation. But we can talk after. OK. Um, I had a second yeah. question if you're yeah. done with that. Um, yeah. You have root cause yeah. for this. Have you ever worked in a complex system where there's only <laughs> one thing that broke one thing? Because um, I want that job. Uh, fair point. Um, so, yeah, so like major incidents are generally like a breakdown of a number of things, right? Right. Um, we work in complex number of systems. processes, yeah. uh, however you want to define that. Um, generally, we can link that to a particular deployment at a particular Lix, which is like the main s sort of switch to the incident. Um, we can yes. definitely go into that later. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Just on the MTD as well, uh, my team is actually working on a system uh, to try and alert smarter um, so we catch things faster. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Thanks for your talk. I um, yeah. was wondering about uh, the confidence score. I wanted yes. to know, I know it's going to be relative to everyone. <laughs> it's, you know, the black art of, yep. you know, correlation. But yep. um, do you base heavily on an alert triggering? an alert triggering on that dependent service? Or do you guys have some funky, like, relative changes in latency or things All like right. metric based? So I'm going to use a screenshot. So um, all right, so you can see, um, I wish I had a laser pointer. Um, you can see on the left the identity service. Um, it's got a number of things that depend on it, um, which all sort of show a state of distress. Um, and, uh, and then the identity service heavily depends on the cloud service down the bottom. Uh, so uh, and we know that from the call graph data that we've got. And um, so we see that you know, the cloud service is broken. Um, and we also, at the same time, um, look at the comparison and latency, or the comparison and errors. Um, to give us a higher confidence score. The other thing is, uh, so for identity, uh, the identity service, we've got a number of things telling us that uh, we think that service is broken. So that also pushes up the um, uh, the c confidence score. Um, you know, you can see on the uh, more middle t uh, to the right. Um, so feed mixer is calling cap services. Um, so feed mixer thinks that service is broken, but nothing else thinks it's broken. So the line is um, not as thick. Um, which is basically an indicator of confidence visually. Um, so if we did a correlation on that, there'd be, in likelihood, there'd be a lower confidence score. For the drill down stuff, that's a little bit of black magic um, using k-means stuff. Um, I can point you to the right people who wrote that, um, and they can discuss that with you further. Great, thank you. Welcome. Um, 
my question is fairly related. Um, so do you have any analytics or do you do statistics on uh, how much your correlation ID has actually saved time or something like that, or has it ever um, sent you to a wrong place? Yeah, good question. Um, we're still trying to set up some processes to do that effectively um, with the large number of SRE teams um, and other things that are going on that it is difficult, and we launched this um, a bit over a month ago. So um, we're still sort of working some of that out. Uh, the other problem we have is um, we've got a number of initiatives to reduce MTTR and MTTD. So sort of working out which one of those initiatives fixed or helped that problem is actually somewhat challenging for us. But good question. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, if you've got other questions, please feel free to speak to me. Thank you.